Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks for Geeks problem of the day, which is palindrome with minimum sum and it is a medium level problem. So I was not able to make the videos for the last two days. That was because my laptop had some issues. And for now, uh, I've been able to temporarily get it fixed. And let's hope that it doesn't get any bad than this. So we'll quickly discuss this problem statement. So this particular problem seems very simple at trading in the first uh, time but uh, you just have to make a few observations it is not very difficult but you will still have to make some key observations right so this particular uh, problem statement says that we have been given a string s which can contain small english case letters right or question marks now what we have to do is we have to replace these uh, question marks with some characters such that the resulting string is a palindrome and then we have to make it such a way that uh, the differences between the adjacent character that means the uh, difference in the SK values of adjacent characters is minimum, right? And we have to take the sum of these differences. So let me just take this first sample test case as an example. And let me show you. So this is the sample test case that we have. So we initially have an A here and a question mark. And so the question mark is three times. Then we have a C then two question marks. And then we have a C and then four question marks, right? So we have to replace these question marks with some strings. Now we have to do it such a way such that like the difference between these two, let's say this is DX1 and this, these two will be DX2, these two will be DX3 and so on. So like, let's say this is DX n n minus one, right? So this will be DX n minus one. Why? Because this position is n minus one. Right, this position was 1, so this was dx1. This position is n minus 1, so this will be dx of n minus 1. If we take the summation of all these values of dx, right, so this should be minimum as minimum as possible. Right. So, like uh, first of all, we need to understand when the answer can be minus 1. Right. So, obviously, if there are already two characters at some places, so let's say we don't care about what characters are in between, if there are all already two characters present at their respective positions and they are different. That means the answer will be straight away minus 1, right? So this is our very first observation that whenever two characters are present and they are different, that means the answer can be minus 1. Now let us see when do we actually have a choice. So for example, if this was A and the last character was question mark, do I really have a choice here? No, because I want to make it a palindrome. So this will have to be A only. Similarly, if this was a question mark and this particular position was A, do I really have a choice here? Again, no because this particular question mark has to be A, right? So I only have a choice when both of the positions are question marks, right? These are the only cases when I actually have a choice. So first of all, let me just uh, quickly uh, uh, convert my string such that I already know at which places do I actually have a choice. So for example, if I convert this string, so the first character will be A, the last character will be A. Three characters from here will be question mark. And again, three characters from here will be question mark. And then we have a C here, and then we have a C here, and this will be question mark, this will be question mark. Right, so this is my final string. So in this particular final string, I have made sure that there are no two characters that are different and such that they should be same, right. And I have, I have also made sure that all the places in which I had no choice are removed. So for example, this A, was initially question mark but I know that I have to replace it with A so I already put a, a here right so for the remaining places these are question marks these are question marks and these are question marks now you will always observe that for example if I put an AB here and a B will be placed here right so the difference between these two will exactly be identical to the difference between these two so what I can essentially do is I can divide this thing into half I can only compute for the first part and multiply the answer with 2, right. So this is something that you don't necessarily have to do, but this is something like uh, if you know that then this is very cool that you can just calculate the answer for half of it and you can multiply it by 2, right. So for this video, we'll be calculating the answer for the half of the string only, right. And in case what if you're wondering what about these two strings, so obviously if it is a palindrome, these two strings will be identical. So there will be no difference, right. So let us find the answer for the first half of the string. Right. So what can be the answer for this particular half? Now you see, you will always observe 
that this is A and this is C, right? So let's say in the sample test case, they have put in a character B at these three places. So they have done it like this A, B, 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 C. Now let us try to find what will be the difference. So between these two strings, the difference will be one. So essentially we are calculating the difference between their positions. A is at first position and B is at second position. So the difference is one, right? So they termed it using sky values. The answer will be the same, but you can also consider it to be the difference between their positions, right? So for, for the for A and B, the answer will be one. For these two, the answer will be zero. For these two, the answer will be zero. And for these two, the answer will be one again. So the total difference value is two. We are not considering the last question mark for now. We will talk about it later. So now what happens? Since I have found my answer to be two, you will always observe that in this case, I have taken B. But no matter which character I take between A and C, the answer will always be the same. So for example, if I take A, right? So this is like this. Now the difference between these two is zero, these two is zero, these two is zero, and these two is two. The answer is still two. If I try to take C, you will find that this is two, this is zero, this is zero, and this is also zero. Again, the answer is two. So I know no matter which character I take between A and C, the answer will always be the same. You can also understand it something like this. For example, if this is a number line, this is point X and this is point Y, right? No matter which point I consider, I still have to travel from X to Y until and unless I don't take a point outside. So if I take a point outside X and outside the between, between these particular range, then I'll have to go to first this particular point, then I'll have to come back here at Y. But if this is not the case, no matter which point I take between X and Y, the answer will always be the same because I still have to travel from X to Y, right? So this is uh, how you can think of it. So that means if there are some characters of question mark between two constant characters, the answer for them will always be the difference between them. So in this case, the difference between C and A, that is two, right? So again, uh, for the last question mark, since there is no there is no other constant character after it, after it, what I can do is do is I can replace this question mark with any character I like. So obviously, uh, in the optimal case, I would like to replace it with C only, right? So that's the difference between them becomes zero. So what I essentially have to do is first I have to figure out what are all the places in which I can actually place any character I want, right? So once I figure out those, I just divide my string into half. And I just check it in the first half. So what will be the answer in my first half? I'll multiply it by two later on, right? So once I know, like these are the characters, some characters are fixed and others are uh, like variables. So for all these variable characters, I can just remove them and I can just check for the fixed characters. For example, these were the fixed characters in my stream. So my total answer will be the difference between these two, the difference between these two, the difference between these two. So no matter how many question mark can between these, like between these, and between these there will be some question marks or there might be there might not be any question marks at all so the total answer will still be the difference between these two adjacent characters which are fixed in their positions right so this would be the solution of today's problem of the day now let me just quickly summarize through what i just said so i hope that you guys were able to understand the problem statement at least right from then from there uh, we discussed that if two characters are already constants that means they are not question marks and like uh, they have different values, that means the answer can be straight away minus one. Now, if one of them is question mark, I don't really have a choice because I still have to make it to a constant character, right? In this case, the right character was question mark. In this case, the left character was question mark. I only have a real choice when both of them are question marks, right? In this particular case, right? So what do I actually do now? I What I do is I divide my string into half. The only reason be if uh, there is some character here, the difference here, will be replicated in the second half as well because the string is a palindrome, right? So I can just easily check in the first half only. Now, what do I actually check in the first half? I already discussed if there are two characters, two constant characters, and let's say there are some number of question marks in between, right? No matter which character I take to put in the question mark, as long as that particular uh, character is between the first and the last character surrounding it, the answer will not change. Right. So I can just directly take the first character, first constant character and the last constant character uh, among between which the question marks are present and I can just take their difference. So in this case, CNA was here, right? So I just take their difference. This is what you can do. Now for all the places which have constant characters, what uh, I can just uh, store them in a vector or I don't even need to store them because I just need two of them at a time. 
right so i i just need two of them i will take the difference then i'll move on to the next two then i'll move on to the next two right so this is how you can solve this particular problem now let us have a look at the code so like the code might feel a bit messy here but uh, you will realize that these are just a bunch of if else statements so there is nothing very difficult in it right so first i have taken an integer n which will be the string a uh, size of the string right now i've created a vector n i didn't want to change in the string so that is why i have created a vector n this will store which places i can change and which i cannot change and i've created the value of half as n by 2 and in case n is odd i'll increment my half so this is just to include the middle character in case n is odd right so i'll be traveling from 0 to less than half and i just check if s of i and s of n minus i minus 1 are both question marks that means i have a choice in both of them i set v of i and v of n minus i minus 1 as minus 1 right in all of the cases uh, what I do is if s of i is question mark, I set the position of v of i as s of n minus i minus 1. Since they're, they both are not question mark because I have already taken care of that condition here. If one of them is question mark, the other one will be some constant character, right? So I just store its position in both of them. If s of n minus i minus 1 is a question mark, that means s of i will not be a question mark. I store its position, right? Now, if both of these conditions are not satisfied, right? That means both of them are constant characters. In that case, if they both are not equal, then I just return minus 1. Otherwise, I just store their value in v of i. So now, v of i will be consisting of some uh, value greater than or equal to 0 if there was a character present there. And it will be considering minus 1 if there was a question mark present there. Right. So uh, now what I do is I initialize my answer with 0 and last with minus 1. Since I have already discussed, I told you like we need to compute the difference between adjacent values which we found in the later half of the question. Now, uh, I can also push them into a vector, but I don't actually need it. I just need it two values at a time. That is why I'm, I'm using this last variable to remember the last value, right? So if v of i is equal to minus one, I can just continue. Otherwise, if last is equal to minus one, that means I have encountered no value till now. I just set last is equal to v of i and I just continue, right? If both of these statements are not executed, then, then only I'll reach this particular part. Then I'll up update my answer as I'll add this value to my answer that is last minus v of i right so v of i is the current character last will be the previous character and i'll multiply it by 2 and i'll update my last value as the current character so you see this is what i'm talking about so if a a b was like this a b d e let's say right so last was initially minus 1 when i encountered this particular position i set last as 0 right so i'm considering the position of it right when i encounter this particular position i see that the last value is not minus 1 and the current value is something. So I just add 1 minus 0 to my answer and I'll update my last as 1. Right. So last will be considering this particular position. Then I go here. That means uh, I have the current value 3. I have my last value 1. And I just mark the difference. Then I'll update my last as this particular character. Since I need only two characters at a time, I can use this particular technique. Alternatively, what you could have done is you just have pushed A, B, D, E into a vector. And then you have compared V of I and V of I minus 1. Right. Like these positions. So that was not actually required. So that is why I just use this last variable. And at the end, I can just return my answer value. So let me just quickly run this particular code and show you that this works. So I believe that they have they updated their UI. Now it doesn't show on which test case it is running. It just says processing result. And you see that this particular code passes all the test cases. So that was it for today's video. I hope you guys were able to understand the solution. If you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video was actually helpful for the viewers and they really enjoyed watching this particular content. Then only this uh, video will get to more people like you who want to uh, like uh, increase their problem solving skills. Now, uh, I see a lot of people who watch these videos have not subscribed yet. So if you're one of them, then do consider subscribing to the channel. It's always free of course. And you can always unsubscribe if you don't find the videos interesting later. So till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe. Bye-bye.